Hey again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Today I wanted to talk to you about whether it's the right thing to use sand to improve your heavy or clay soils. Now, if you'll recall, I made a video about a year ago on how to improve heavy and clay soils. And if I mentioned sand at all, maybe I even didn't. It really was a video focused on adding organic amendments and green mulches to the top of your soil. Things like wood chips, compost, manure, leaf mold, or again, green mulches like comfrey or alfalfa or cover crops. And so I didn't talk about sand in that video particularly, but it came up in the comment section. A lot of people came out and said, well, isn't sand the best way to improve the texture of your soil? And I, you know, good vigorous debate in that and I like that. I like that we can try to sort this stuff out together. Um, so I wanted to go today and talk about the difference between uh, texture, soil texture and soil structure. The difference between soil texture and soil structure is so important, so fundamental to soil science. It was literally the first thing I learned in my soil science class in university, perhaps even on the first day. So soil texture is what you classically hear about when you talk about soil types. It's the sand, the silt, and the clay. Soil structure is an entirely a different thing, which I'll explain in a minute. But let's go over texture first. If you will, you will call those the ingredients of your soil. They're not the cake itself, they're just like the flour, the sugar, the eggs, okay? Uh, they, they determine what went into the soil, but not how it was baked. So that's the analogy I'll, I'll bring forward here. So, uh, of course, sand, sandier soils are looser. They have a lot more pore spaces. They're gonna let the soil run, they're gonna let the water run through a lot quicker. They'll have lots of air spaces in them. Uh, you know, siltier and particularly clayish soils are much, much heavier and they retain nutrients a lot more. They retain moisture a lot more and they're just heavier and stickier as soils. So when we're talking about sand, silt and clay, we really are just talking about the ingredients. And soil scientists put together a soil texture pyramid or triangle to show you how that's going to work. I'm gonna put up a, a copy of that on the screen here and maybe highlight a section here to show that at the very bottom end of this, that's going to include your sandiest and loamiest soils. But at the top portion of the pyramid here, it's talking about your clay soils. And you'll see how far the line goes down. In fact, anything down to about 20% clay uh, components in your soil has heavy or sticky characteristics of clay and by the time you get to 30 or 40 percent it's completely dominated by clay characteristic. Now if that told the whole story, if that was all you had to worry about was just what ingredients are in your soil, this would be a much easier video. I would be much more ready to just say okay tear up the whole lot, put down a whole bunch more sand, grind it in with your rototiller, you're golden. The part that is not so clear cut from that approach is that soil structure is something entirely different. That is how the cake is baked with all the air holes and all of the, the structure of that, of, that, uh, of that profile. So if I dig out a section of soil, which I'll do here, you'll see that at the top end of the soil, it has a lot more organic matter. It's a lot looser. It's, a, it's the part where the worms and the soil life are interacting with the organic matter and digging that into the top end of the soil. And then as you move down through the soil profile, the characteristics change. It moves from being rather organic and it has lots of spaces and lots of soil life to an area that is less so and then towards the bottom of your soil and even getting down deeper into the subsoil almost completely lacking of those uh, of those components so it's not homogeneous from top to bottom and those air spaces and the water uh, movement through that as well as the soil life and the organic matter makes up a really really important component of what your soil performance is and in fact the way that it has settled like that the way that it's been in there with the fungus and and everything working in that soil it's like it's a living profile all to its own um, and once you go in there and you grind it up and you add a new component you, and you make this homogeneous layer of like say 18 inches, if you were going to, of a, a new mixture of sand, silt and clay primarily, you've completely disrupted what was existing and what was working and existing in your soil previously. So to say that yes, you've changed, if you, if you increased sand in your, in your soil, that 
changing that ingredient would change the characteristics, absolutely. But there's a cost to doing that. Not only the cost in labor, not only the cost in bringing in sand, but the cost immediately to the condition of your soil. So going back to that baking analogy I made, the ingredients, the sand, the silt, and the clay, uh, if you adjust that and you do that by grinding it up and putting in a bunch of new ingredients, it's a bit like, and I'm going to call this the pastry dough analogy. So a pastry dough is a specially prepared dough that has all sorts of different layers in it. And so when you put it in the oven and you bake it, those layers, that structure is, uh, is, is baked in. And so when I take a, a cut, a profile of this, what you'll see is a very thick, uh, airy pastry dough. Whereas if I take the same dough, same ingredients, stick them in the, in the blender or the food processor in advance and just mash it up and roll it out and put it into the oven, I'm not going to get the same results. What I'm gonna end up getting is something that's much, much thinner and lacking all of those air spaces. So the cost of putting in those new ingredients into your soil is, a, is, is much the same. That you've, you've basically completely interrupted the, the existing structure of the soil in favor of trying to adjust those ingredients. So the most contentious thing I may have to deal with in this video here is the allegation that you'll have to add a lot of sand to your clay soil to make it better. And some of that comes from internet sources and one particular one I will link below. Um, she's a credible source. I've liked her stuff before. Linda Chalker Scott, uh, PhD from Washington State actually, um, who explains that because the uh, clay will have to f will fill in the pores between the sand you have to add an awful lot of sand to make the improvement I did a calculation myself it didn't seem catastrophic if I, I if I looked at a 20 by 20 plot of land uh, so you're doing a, a veggie garden say 20 by 20 and you wanted to amend it to about two feet and you're trying to move the clay content from from 40 percent down to 30 percent so so that you can get into the loam territory um, I calculated that depending on how you did it, whether you removed material and then added some, or whether you just heaped on a bunch and then tilled in, you might have to add between 60 and 260 cubic feet of sand, which, yeah, sounds like a lot of work, it sounds like a lot of material, but it's not catastrophic by any means. And if that gets you the results that you need, hey, good on you. Um, my only focus of this video is to make you understand that that doesn't happen without a cost and once again I'm not talking about the physical cost of sand I'm not talking about the labor cost of putting in the sand I'm talking about every time that you dig your soil and you till your soil you sacrifice those fungal structures the life the uh, the air holes and everything else you make this homogeneous layer of uh, of the ingredients um, but it basically has to start all over again to get the uh, the structure back that it needs to to uh, to make great plant root systems so before you go ahead and try to add sand as an amendment dig in a big volume of sand into your garden uh, I'd like you to consider some of the alternatives and uh, I, I'll, I'll point towards another YouTube channel. I think his name is Charles Dowding, who does a no dig channel. And I kind of like what he does there. It's a, basically a sheet mulch that he uses with uh, mounds of organic matter uh, that he's using on top of the native soil. So it's, a, it's basically like a raised bed, but without all those pesky wooden borders that eventually rot out on you. And uh, I can see the advantage of this because from that layer of organic matter he's got on the top, that layer of manure or compost that he has on the top, the plants can establish good roots and will probably even dig below that and get into the native soil, which is fantastic. Over time, that addition of organic matter is going to improve his soil from top down, and I think that's a fantastic approach. All right, those are my two cents on uh, using sand to improve your clay or heavy soil. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments or debates or, or rude remarks, leave those below the video and I'll be happy to answer those as well. Thank you so much.